right. You serpents, you brought of vipers. Here we go. Yep. All right. So Matthew 23, 33, where Yeshua or Jesus is talking to Pharisees here. And he says, he calls them serpents. He says, you serpents, you brood of vipers. How are you going to escaping sentence to hell? Okay. So the anti-Semitic claim here is that Jewish people are evil. They are, as Jesus describes them, a brood of vipers. So this is, we need to address this. And in order to address this, we need to understand the, the context of Matthew 23 and also the, the larger Jewish context of the first century and first century Second Temple Judaism. So the first point, Pharisees do not represent all Jews, right? There were many different Jewish groups in the first century in Second Temple Judaism. And according to Craig Keener, Pharisees made up less than 0.5% of the Jewish population in Israel during the first century. And he's actually combining Sadducees, Essenes, and Pharisees in, in that 0.5%, less than 0.5%. So this is a very, very small percentage of the Jewish population. They don't represent all of Jews. Remember also that Jesus is a Jew himself. He, strongly, he is strongly criticizing a group of Pharisees. And again, this is not all Pharisees. These are a particular group of Pharisees who are, who are in sin, who are committing very serious sins. But he is critiquing, Jesus being a Jew, cr strongly critiques a particular group of Pharisees for hypocrisy and defiling the temple through bloodshed. And in doing so, he calls them serpents and brood of vipers. You, you read it and read it in context. You, you serpents in Matthew 20 through 33 through 35. You serpents, you brood of vipers, how are you How are you to escape being sentenced to hell? Therefore I send you prophets and wise men and scribes, some of whom you will kill and crucify, and some, some you will flog in your synagogues and persecute from town to town, so that, so that on you may come all the righteous bloodshed on earth, from the blood of the righteous, of the righteous Abel to the blood of Zechariah, the son of Bechariah, whom you murdered between the sanctuary and the altar. So he... Jesus is charging these Pharisees with bloodshed, which actually defile the temple, which causes God's presence to leave it. He's, this, is, this is very serious. And Jesus was not the only Jew who strongly criticized another Jewish group. Long before Jesus, Isaiah says the following words to Israel for their sins of idolatry in Isaiah 59, verse 3, 5, and 7 through 8. I'll read. For your hands are defiled with, bl with blood and your fingers with iniquity. Your lips have spoken lies. Your tongue mutters wickedness. They hatch adder's eggs. They weave the spider's web. He who eats their eggs dies. And from one that is crushed, a viper is hatched. Their works are works of iniquity and deeds of violence are in their hands. Their feet run to evil and they are swift to shed innocent blood. Their thoughts are thoughts of iniquity. Desolation and destruction are in their highways. The way of peace they do not know and there is no justice in their paths. They have made their roads crooked. So Isaiah says all this because of Israel's sins, but that does not make him anti-Semitic, and no one would make the claim, right, at least justifiably, that Isaiah is anti-Semitic. But another Jewish group that we can look at that, that actually is very close to the, the charge Yeshua is making against uh, these Pharisees for their defiling of the temple is actually the Qumran community. So the Qumran community, they believe that certain priests defile the Jerusalem temple, resulting in sacrifices losing their efficacy to atone, which is why they left and went to Qumran to have their own community outside of the Jerusalem temple. So in the Damascus document, also known as CD, uh, chat five or six through nine, the community actually calls out certain priests that forsake the Torah. It says that through their incestuous relations and sexual activity during their partner, partner's menstrual period, they defiled the Jerusalem temple. And here is the response to these priests that the Qumran community uh, records in the Damascus document, uh, 5, 12 to 13 where it says, they have reviled the statutes of God's covenant, saying they are not well-founded. All of them are kindlers and lighters of brands. The webs of a spiders are their webs, and the eggs of vipers are their eggs. So the Qumran community, they're not being anti-Semitic when they strongly criticize another Jewish group for morally defiling the temple, and neither is Jesus when he strongly criticizes a group of Pharisees for their morally, moral defiling of the temple. In fact, the Qumran community went even further than Jesus. They were, they were, they were instructed to hate non-community members, where we read in the community rule, 1QS19, hate all the children of darkness. They even prayed that God would not forgive apostates in 1QS28. So no one is calling the Qumran community anti-Semitic because 
they are because they're Jews themselves. This is an intra-Jewish polemic debate, right? Um, so in contrast to the Qumran community, after Jesus strongly criticizes the group of Pharisees who defiled the temple, Jesus laments and expresses his love for his people and echoes Psalm 91.4, expressing his desire to protect his people, where he says, how often I would have how often would I have gathered your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings and you were not willing for Matthew 23, 37. So Jesus speaks so harshly. Like, so like, why is Jesus speaking so harshly here? Well, I mean, they're, they're, they're committing a serious sin, which causes God's presence to leave the temple. But Jesus speaks so harshly because he loves Israel. He loves the Jew, his Jewish brothers who are Pharisees. They are his family. He hates their hypocrisy and that they morally defile the temple through bloodshed, but he does not hate them. He loves them. And also Jesus is speaking to particular Pharisees, not all Pharisees fit, fit the description in Matthew 23, such as Paul, who again, as we mentioned earlier, after coming to faith in Jesus, continued to identify himself as a Pharisee. So that's how I would address yeah. that, that passage. Absolutely. And before we move on, I want to throw in one more passage in Matthew here really yeah. quickly, because I'll see, you know, some anti-Semites use this one. They'll talk about uh, this parable of the tenets, and then Jesus says at the end, therefore I tell you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to people producing fruit. And the anti-Semites will go, you see, the, the kingdom has been removed from the Jewish people and it's been given to Christians. And this has been thoroughly addressed in this book I mentioned, the historical Jesus in the temple. Uh, but of course, you can address it using two of your brain cells when it says just two verses later, when the chief priests and the Pharisees heard this parable, they perceived he was speaking of them. Okay, yeah. So Jesus isn't speaking of all the Jewish people. He's speaking of the chief priests and the Pharisees, and he's giving the kingdom to his disciples. I mean, Matthew talks about Peter being given the keys, like playing on that Elikum idea in the book of Isaiah, given the keys to the kingdom. Uh, it's not, again, moving from the Jewish people to the Gentiles. It's moving from the chief priests and the Pharisees to Jesus' own Jewish disciples. Okay, right. So it's like, yep. so. <laughs> Again, just read read the context, guys. Yeah. I don't know how you come away with the New Testament being anti-Semitic. Just read the context. Yeah, 